वेलकम गाइस दिस इज द न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस ऑफ 16 जुलाई 2023 लेट्स स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल इज अबाउट इंडिया एंड यूएई प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी वाज विजिटिंग फ्रांस व्हाइल ही इज रिटर्निंग दे ही मेड अ वन डे विजिट टू यूएई एंड देयर आर सम एग्रीमेंट्स हैव बीन साइंड बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज एंड लेट्स गेट इनटू द आर्टिकल both the countries have signed uh, agreement especially these agreements are signed between rbi and the central bank of uae and this agreement deals with the domestic currencies and these agreements are going to strengthen the usage of dom domestic currencies especially within the issues of bilateral trade and relationship between the two countries the first agreement is about usage of domestic currency for cross, uh, cross border uh, transaction that indian currency uh, rupee and uh, uae currency dirham will be used for cross border transaction so it will boost both the countries uh, currency value and it also it includes among this uh, agreement there is another cla clause which includes mutual acceptance of domestic card the indian cards will be uh, which, which are gi uh, given by indian banks will be accepted in dubai and sorry in uae the same uh, it is it is the same it same thing has been re re reciprocated in india as well the cards uh, which are which are given by the banks of uae will be accepted in indian market as well and the second agreement is interlinking the payment and messaging system this is also very crucial for overall strengthening of domestic currencies both the countries if you look at this move both the countries are moving towards de dollarization you know from past uh, 15 days articles were continuously coming regarding de dollarization how india should uh, go forward in this aspect there are so many suggestions from various economists to strengthen rupee and make rupee as internationalization and also reduce the depend on the dollar and this is one among the strategic move to make our currency very strong in international market especially you know after sanctions on russia by the west russia has been restricted in the swift uh, the communication it was very difficult to trade with russia especially in dollars so india started paying in chinese yuan then uh, so these kind of trends it is likely to enhance the trend of doing business in local currencies on the whole this is going to uh, push for strengthening of uh, uh, internal currency of uh, country and india india also supported uh, uae for cop 28 presidency that is uh, conference of parties the 28th conference of party is going to ha happen in uh, uae and the uh, uae since uae, UAE, UAE host the uh, part i'm sorry since uae host the conference of parties that is 28th uh, conference that is happening india showed us complete strength and also this is the fifth visit by prime minister modi to uae and it shows how deep our relationship between two countries let's see the position of uae and let's cover this aspect from geography perspective as well uh, here it is india and uae the entire region this region is called middle east region and uae is situated here uh, see this from a world map so that the relative position between india and uae you can understand and let's see in detail and this is the united arab state emirates and here the point of reference if you see tropic of cancer here it moves and it pass through the uae the neighboring countries include saudi arabia in the west and in the uh, south and eastern position you can see oman and persian gulf is here gulf of oman is here and this is important strait of hormuz so these geographical aspect you have to remember when you consider uh, uh, uae and also here it is qatar another neighboring country of uae let me give you guys brief introduction regarding uh, india uae relationship and it is important from exam perspective we both have a very strong bonds and we have ties in cultural ties we have religious ties we have economic ties and our uh, friendship is very uh, extremely important for overall uh, peace and stability in that region and if you if we see the relationship over the years uh, there are 3 million Ind indians they are uh, living in uae they are working and they are earning their livelihood in uae and 
initially uae we established diplomatic relationship in 1972 uae started exporting oil in 1960s after that we our relationship has become very stronger throughout the years and last year in 2021 22 the bilateral trade was 72 billion dollars and that year uh, the trade this is the third largest trading partner in the world for the india and we have signed a strategic uh, partnership in 2017 and both the countries are also in, in the defense sector also both the countries are uh, extremely crucial and uh, they are involved in uh, bilateral exercises and defense dialogues are also happening every year on regular basis and this shows that how deep our connections are and uh, whenever there was an issue between india and pakistan uae played that mediator role and some somehow it uh, uh, tried to uh, normalize the relationship between the two countries and for india we have extended neighborhood policy and ua uae is very important when it comes to india's uh, extended neighborhood policy and also look west policy in that region and let's see the significance between uh, uh, for india with uae energy security is extremely extremely critical india is energy hungry nation and we need that energy for our development and uae is one among the strong and very trusted partner from so many years and we can rely on uh, uae for energy security of our country and of course economic significance there is aspect of tourism there is aspect of remittance from uae from all these criteria uh, and even there is a uh, investment uh, there is a lot of invent investment coming coming from uae and also it has been increased year on year so economic significance is very huge when you look at uae and india relationship then diaspora as i told there are 3.5 million people indians are working and living in uae and the cultural ties we had a cultural ties way before we established a diplomatic relationship and it goes uh, hundreds of years before and uae and saudi arabia these countries are extremely important to counter radicalization and many a time there are financial channels from these countries have been used for radicalization especially in india also so having good relationship with uae definitely will help to curb radicalization happening in the country and also uae act as a gateway to the central asia from all these aspect uae becomes uh, uh, the relationship is getting stronger and stronger and even in future uh, the recently uh, there, there was a temple have been inaugurated in uae and this shows that our friendship is friendship is going to go for very long uh, period the next article uh, it's not important from exam perspective uh, it, this article talks about there is an illegal migration it is happening to us especially from india and this particular case there is a illegal, illegal migration from gujarat and uh, this uh, this article talks about it but you have to see this from ethics perspective and what are the issues related with uh, whether it's migration asylum all these things refugees now how does this affect uh, one from the victim side another from the country side and what are the issues what are the things the person or the refugee uh, he faces and what are the challenges even the country which accept these uh, refugees uh, refugees are asylum seekers and what are those issues you have to see this from ethics perspective in the next news uh, rahul gandhi has moved to uh, supreme court for defamation case uh, recently the uh, surat session court has uh, given a sentence of 2 years jail term for rahul gandhi and rahul gandhi approached high court against this order even the high court of gujarat has up upheld the order given by uh, surat session court now rahul gandhi is moving to uh, supreme court regarding de defamation case here in one of the election campaign uh, mr rahul gandhi has mentioned that uh, all the thieves have which surname modi so this has become a defamation case in court because of this rahul gandhi is going to lose lok sabha uh, seat in parliament the in if you look at the people of representation of people act 1951 where it has been mentioned if a uh, elected representative whether it's for uh, assembly or uh, parliament if he has been sentenced for year of 2 years then uh, what the sentence year that is 2 years and plus the next 6 years he is not eligible to be a part of uh, 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 either parliament or assembly so this becomes extremely crucial for any parliamentarians or any legislator uh, 
to uh, you know himself is not wrong in a court of law let's move to the next article uh, the next article uh, it mentions i uh, because of artificial intelligence there were some frauds happening in ayushman bharat both from a people side and also from hospital side and because of artificial in intelligence those frauds have been uh, uh, detected and proper actions have been uh, taken this is about the news this news is uh, not important but since there is a mention of ayushman bharat let me give you guys brief introduction regarding this topic and this Aishman Bharat has been launched in 2018 and it is recommended by National Health Policy of 2017. The main objective is uh, to achieve universal health coverage. It is a centrally sponsored scheme and it contains uh, two important components in it. One is health and wellness centers. Second one is Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. The second aspect is imp very important from exam perspective here. What, ex what exactly is Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana? It is a world largest health insurance scheme and it is fully financed by government. It gives 5 lakh rupees per family per year insurance cover. And this insurance can be availed, availed both in public and private hospital. Private hospital includes uh, the government selected ones, not uh, all the private hospitals. And now it has a coverage of 50 crore beneficiaries. And uh, there is an objective of to provide cashless access to the healthcare services let's move on to the next article uh, there is a piece of information the dharavi is a world largest slum the rejuvenation of dharavi is happening and that uh, project has given to adani uh, group this is not uh, much important but this is just a piece of information you see this uh, news from an urban development per perspective, the rejuvenation of uh, slums and all these things where you can give this example if Dharavi, uh, this model can be replicated in other cities as well. There is an another news, uh, you can use this as an example in your ethics, especially when the questions is related to communal harmony or a, a social integration. Uh, here there is a, the arch where both the information regarding a, a Muslim mosque and a Hindu temple has been written and it showcases the integration, it showcases the communal harmony that has been uh, prevailed in the society. Now, these kind of example, live examples, you can write it in your answers and it will add, it will give some weightage to, to your answers. It means that you are connect whatever happening in news uh, to your answer sheet. So, this you can use it as an example. The next article, uh, the a diplomat of a China has given a statement. Uh, you can use these kind of statements as a conclusion in your answers and also these can statements can be used in your uh, ethics as well uh, sorry in uh, essay as well here he mentions that you know our uh, china and india relationship we have a deeper relationship of course we have challenges but these kind of specific issues should not define our types you know being uh, trade partners of 100 billion dollars is a uh, billion dollars is very huge and ignoring that and concentrating on very small small specific issues is not going to have a any good relationship in our uh, friendship so he, he says that the two sides should uh, so should support each other rather than consume and distrust each other we should focus our energy and resources on each other's development improving people's li livelihood rather than specific issues uh, uh, those things is not going to define our ties Let's move on to the next article. In the next article, there is a mention that the collagium process have appointed few judges for high court. Uh, this uh, article is not re important. It is not required from exam perspective. It has mentioned that the name of the judges that have been appointed to various high courts. But uh, collagium is important from a mains perspective, especially for paper 2, GS paper 2. Let me give you guys brief introduction to this topic. Collegium system is a way by which uh, judges of both Supreme Court and High Court are appointed and also transfer related issues is also handled by Collegium. Uh, for High Court, it is a five member body uh, it, which is headed by Chief Justice of India plus four other senior most judges. They take the decision and for uh, High Court, it is led by high, Chief Justice of that High Court and also 
two senior most judges of that particular court they take a decision on appointment and transfer and this has been the appointment has been mentioned in constitution under the article of 124 for supreme court and article 217 deal with appointment of judges for high court of uh, these articles you should remember from prelims perspective and also in the mains if you write these article numbers in your answers it it adds up it gives weightage to your answers and let's see the evolution of the system initially the, in the first judge, judges case 1981 where it has been declared that uh, cji decision uh, is uh, final when it comes to the appointment and the transfers and it has declared he has his words has a primacy over anything else even the executive don't have uh, any control over it and in the second judges case in 1993 there was there was an addition to it it was not uh, just uh, uh, chief justice of india's individual opinion but there will be other two judges also their opinion will also be considered when it comes to the appointment and transfer of these judges and in 1998 cases the this collegium system has been expanded from the three member body it has been made five member body and it come now it is uh, chief justice of india with four other senior most judges of uh, supreme court and this is uh, this decision has been taken in third judges case and there are some issues there are some uh, uh, challenges to this uh, collegium system uh, first one is there is an exclusion of executive they have no word to say and whatever uh, the name that has been given to the executive they have to appoint it the government has to give its uh, accent assent to the whatever the name that has been sent to him and there is a chance of favor favoritism and nepotism yes there as uh, there were so many news report there were even uh, civil society people accuse the court uh, appointments especially the, it favors their own uh, uh, you know people and uh, their own uh, uh, even the concept of nepotism is increasing this is the one among the criticism given regarding appointment of judges in uh, high court and supreme courts and it it goes against the checks and balances in our democratic system the legislature executive and judiciary in co uh, constitution ethos says, says that there is a checks and balance for all these pillars of this democracy and somewhere having con complete control over its appointment removal uh, complete control over its uh, the transfer somewhere it shows that it goes against that principle of uh, checks and balances even the appointment has no established criteria it it happens in closed door mechanism and there is no standard procedure that this this is the way these people are going to be appointed there is no standard procedure for civil society as well to know that how these appointment happen so again this is one among the critics uh, one, one of the criticism regarding the uh, collegium system and also there is unequal representation there are only 9% women judges women uh, judges are there in judiciary and their representation in appointment and all it's extremely extremely low let's move on to the next article the next article is about uh, g20 uh we have in september india is hosting a g20 summit and there are pre g20 conferences and communication meets are happening and this is a third g20 sherpa meet a sherpa are usually appointed by head of the state and they come and they they discuss the things which are um, uh, very much important for g20 summit and this third summit happened in hampi uh, let me give you guys brief introduction regarding uh, g20 G20 or a group of 20 it is an international organization it comprises of uh, 19 countries plus european union and there was a the question in preliminary examination that G20 has 20 countries no it has 19 country countries and european uh, union european union is a bunch of 27 countries so it is 19 plus european union and G20 it is composed of uh, world's largest economies and it has both developed and uh, developing countries as well it is constituted in 1999 and uh, after, there was a financial crisis for southeast asian countries after in 1990 after that uh, G20 has been formed to make sure that financial stability uh, around the world prevails and uh, the main objective is also the same thing to secure global financial stability especially uh, 
countries which are uh, developing and middle income countries and together if you look at the, uh, the data g20 countries have 60 percent of world population 80 percent of uh, global gdp and 75 percent of the global trade it shows how economically important this organization is and decision taken here is going to have a wide ramification and there is a list of members here you can pause and go through with these uh, the the name of these members but you can e easily make a guess if you take a north america south america you see which are the countries which are uh, financially strong and that's how you can uh, make a distinct distinction and you can remember the countries actually and let's see what are the uh, focused issue it, it is not only about the economy they also uh, discuss about uh, food security they also uh, there will be discussions regarding uh, climate change the, uh, the last year there was a digital transformation conclave also happened and even health pers perspective will also be taken into the consideration in uh, g20 summit let's move on to the next article and in the next news pakistan says that militants are given refuge in afghanistan I don't know what to react for this uh, article. The next article is about uh, polio virus. Before getting to the article, let me give you guys brief introduction uh, regarding polio. Uh, polio mellitus is an infection. It is caused by a polio virus and it is highly contagious uh, diseases and it directly affects person's nervous system. And this is extremely, extremely contagious diseases and the proper steps have to be taken uh, to tackle this uh, minans and there is no cure for polio and uh, but there is a way to uh, tackle this it is a proper vaccination have to be given at very young age of the children and there are three types of polio virus uh, wild polio virus type 1 type 2 and type 3 and all the three are uh, extremely uh, crucial and they cause irreversible paralysis and even death at, uh, to some uh, the cases and all the three have to be separately handled and they have to be eradicated individually and the main uh, route for virus transmission is fecal and oral route and there are instances even uh, polio virus has been transmitted through food and water as well and it largely affects the children uh, at the age of uh, under the age of five years and there are some steps have been taken to eradicate this uh, uh, polio virus uh, the global polio eradication initiative was taken by world health assembly in the uh, 1980s and then in 1986 in india the first uh, mission the pilot polio vaccine uh, vaccination campaign has been held the that is called uh, polio plus the polio eradication campaign but in 1995 the proper uh, step has been taken and that is called national immunization immunization day and it is generally known as pulse polio uh, mission and this is conducted twice a year and this is extremely successful and when whenever there is a question in um, mains especially in paper 3 regarding health you can give pulse polio the success of pulse polio mission as one of the uh, you know uh, though that model can be replicated in other way if, if there is a question regarding tb malaria or any other uh, issue you can mention as a, a way forward you can mention that the model which has been successful in india is pulse polio and the same methodology can be applied here as, as well uh, to uh, fight these uh, uh, issue of whether it's malaria dengue all these things that you can mention there this article talks about vaccine derived polio virus now when i gave the introduction i told that uh, there are three types of uh, polio viruses these are wild polio viruses and the new uh, emergence of vaccine derived polio viruses and vaccine associated paralytic uh, polio amylitis this is a cause of concern actually an article mentions that developing countries we use oral polio vaccine and because of this the vaccine derived polio cases has been emerging if you look at the developed countries they don't use it so somewhere it is article mentions that we need to follow that methodology so that we can eliminate vaccine derived uh, uh, polio viruses from the country in oral vaccination what happens is the deactivated polio viruses will be uh, given to the ch child 
and when it enters the antibodies will be detected will be generated in the body and that this will give you a whole life uh, protection it acts as a barrier against the polio viruses and it gives protection to the child but what is happening is these deactivated polio viruses when these enter when it goes out of the body when it enters the drainage system and or when it enters the environment somewhere they are manifesting into a vaccine derived polio viruses so this issue has to be tackled to eradicate polio virus from the from the country completely uh, the rest of the information is not at all important from exam perspective even i feel like this article is not important uh, because polio is not very much in news and it has been almost uh, eradicated from the country the issues like uh, tb hiv these has a uh, when you come when you compare it with uh, which one is important i think uh, the uh, tuberculosis or the uh, chicken kunya dengue these were this will be important from exam perspective rather than polio virus uh, anyhow i've given a detailed explanation of this article let's move on to the next article uh, since we don't have editorials today but there are two articles that are uh, uh, extremely important from exam perspective now one is the uh, forest pill and there is another article regarding nato and ukraine crisis so let me give you i'll, I'll discuss both the articles let's start with the uh, forest bill article this article the same issues i have given detailed explanation but still i'll go through with the uh, what are the amendments that have been uh, proposed for forest bill i think that would be sufficient rather than completely uh, going through the contents of this article and the same thing has been repeated as well even the editorials there were two three articles regarding amendments of forest bill it is like consolidation of same points again they have given so i'll give you what are the changes have been uh, uh, made in a new forest bill that would be sufficient from exam perspective the first amendment uh, talks about uh, deemed forest deemed forest are those areas which have same uh, cat, uh, characteristics of a forest but these are not considered as forest area but in a godavarman case where court has mentioned that even deemed forest will come under the control of uh, authorities and if any changes or are any uh, commercial activities have to be taken inside it the government's permission or the authority clearance is extremely required for this but in the new amendment this has to be taken off from the list and deemed forest will not be considered as a forest and clearance uh, is not required to have any commercial activity there so this is the issue and there are uh, there is opposition from uh, the civil society and some ngos that this is going to affect the forest cover of the country uh, but government has told that only uh, tourism related activities are very critical projects will be given permission there will not be any uh, commercialized or industrialization activities will be uh, supported in that region so that is one aspect next is uh, in the international border around 100 kilometers there is no necessity to take clearance for any projects there again this move has been uh, criticized that this is going to compromise the eco sensitive regions especially when you think of himalayas trans himalayas and northeast regions uh, giving this uh, permission for 100 kilometers international bo border is going to affect these ecological uh, sensitive areas very adversely and again the government has given a clarification that these uh, no clearance has will be given only for the defense related or government related project and no private entities will be entertained in those uh, international border uh, region and there is a name change initially we it was forest conservation bill and now there is extra term has been added that is augmentation again this move has been criticized that this augmentation somewhere it symbolizes commercialization but government's uh, government perspective is that we need to have that sustainable sustainable development and conservation they should both they should both go hand in hand otherwise it is difficult for overall economic development of the country and also it is going to affect the livelihood of the people who uh, live in the peripheral region of a forest area from all these perspective uh, the name change it is it, it shows the new uh, dimension of forest conservation and next is uh, next move has been uh, very much uh, appreciated that intense incentives have been given to the plantation orchards 
all these uh, private activities and this was extreme this was needed actually to increase forest cover if we if we look at forest cover uh, from last uh, 40 50 years somewhere it seems that the core forest area is very stagnant and whatever the extra forest cover that has increased that is due to the plantation and other private entities involvement in it and giving in, in incentives to these private ent entities for plantation and other tree building activities it is going to help to increase the forest cover on the whole and also india uh, seeing this foreign conservation from uh, climate and the global warming aspect uh, as well because we need that afforestation and reforestation for that uh, uh, carbon sink and india is focusing to create carbon sink almost 3 billion tons by 2030 from all this perspective new forest bill is a uh, little bit diverted from the core principle of forest conservation bill but proper government says that proper uh, uh, precautionary steps have been taken so that uh, no undue advantage will be taken and no forest uh, uh, area will be diverted for any industrial purposes without any concrete evidence uh, this is what this uh, bill talks about let's move on to the next article the next article is about nato and ukraine and this is extremely uh, uh, beautifully written uh, article and uh, that this gives you a better understanding regarding geopolitics that is happening in European region. This article written in very simple language, very straight po straightforward point, no confusion has been created in this article. Now let's get into the article. Recently NATO uh, met in Lithuania, Lithuania and here the main uh, issue all the NATO countries met there and main discussion was regarding ukraine and uh, russia crisis and all these countries they showed their uh, support to ukraine whether it is defense equipment financial or any other aspect they showed their complete support to the ukraine and let's see uh, look at the past in 2008 ukraine wanted to be a member of nato and even nato offered us mem offered its membership to ukraine but at that time france and germany and some other countries they opposed the move uh, to join uh, Ukraine into the NATO because uh, they thought that this will somewhere trigger that uh, Russia factor in that uh, Eurasian region and it is not good for the countries in the European countries and these countries are mainly dependent on Russia for uh, gas and other hydrocarbon related uh, imports. So the decision to join Ukraine into NATO that has been sidelined for a time being at that time but later there was a russian aggression if you look at crimea it has uh, it has occupied the uh, crimean region and russian aggression is very much evident in the border region especially donbas donetsk all these region uh, and also russian involvement in georgia in 2018 so all these have made european countries to rethink their uh, decision and they started showing their support to the ukraine membership especially at this uh, nato meet in lithuania all the countries have supported uh, ukraine membership and they have even financially and they are uh, whether it's energy security financial or uh, defense related you see the wholehearted support from all these countries but still no time period has been uh, given to the ukraine that at by this year we will induct you into the uh, nato no that decision have been taken this year sweden has joined nato and most probably next year finland is also going to be a part of uh, nato but still the decision to make uh, ukraine as a part of nato there was no timetable or a, uh, a time period has, that decision has not been taken and why is it so that question is on everybody's mind why there was no decision to add ukraine into nato see nato is a collective security groups there are these 32 countries even if any of the country attacks any of these one of the 32 countries all the countries consider this this is a collective uh, uh, attack and all the countries come together to uh, take a decision on that and they find a collectively attack on the attacker so this is the issue here and this is how nato works and what happens is if ukraine has been joined to a nato if and they 
this russian aggression is going to continue it is not going to end very soon if there is an altercation between these two countries since ukraine will be a part of nato then this altercation will be considered as attack on all the countries of nato then there will be a collective decision or a collective move from all these country and this will this might lead into a world war situation and at this junction of economic development or the crucial uh, geopolitics world cannot afford world war 3 to avoid all these aspects the uh, especially countries in nato and even in european union they are very skeptical to add ukraine into the group of nato and also russia consider nato a direct threat actually the reason is you know there was a, a cold war and cold war ended in 1990 by the disintegration of soviet union so uh, even after that nato nato started expanding nato went to the the Czech Republic Hungary Poland all these countries have become a part of NATO and even it went to the border like uh, uh, Latvia Lithuania these countries also become a part of NATO and extending somewhere this triggered the Russia and extending it to the Ukraine region this is going to be very crucial and it consider Russia considered as if NATO enters into Ukraine that that will be a red line for Russia and Russia may take very harsh steps in the region so somewhere nato is very skeptical what to do and it is analyzing the uh, situation the geopolitical situation there so that's why the decision on ukraine to join nato has been somewhere uh, that is it is stagnant and there is no time frame on it so on the whole it will take some more time even r- r- ukraine is uh, upset obviously even in the last editorial there has a mention that uh, ukraine leadership shows extreme uh, disappointment regarding the treatment of nato but on the whole if you look at the geopolitics it would be better if ukraine will remain non nato country for a time being that decision should be taken after uh, everything uh, settled down uh, in a geopolitic uh, arena and there is an article regarding chandrayaan there is an article re- regarding a uh, dutch prime minister now i have completely and i have given extensive detail about all these uh, uh, issues in previous uh, news analysis so it is not required as of now uh, this is it for the day guys and thank you so much for those two guys who are watching my videos regularly thank you guys have a good time